broken hearts take time to heal. Whether you're coming out of a long-term marriage or a short-term relationship, it can be really hard to tell whether and when you're ready to start dating again. So in this video, we're gonna talk about four ways that you can check in with yourself and see whether you are still rebounding or whether you're really ready to open yourself up to a new relationship. I'm Dr. Alexandra Solomon, a professor, couples therapist, and author who is passionate about giving you the tools and insights that you need to create a happy and healthy romantic relationship. We live in a world where there's a longer period of time between sexual maturity and saying I do than any generation has had before, which means that there are more people out there who are going to live through more than one love story. And there's no getting around the fact that endings are hard. And it doesn't mean that there aren't new beginnings, but endings are hard. The research on this is crystal clear. If you take uh, somebody who is in the throes of a broken heart, moving through a breakup, and put them in a functional MRI machine, their brains look an awful lot like the brains of somebody who's coming off of a drug like cocaine. So heartbreak is real. And in fact, our brains don't know the difference between physical pain and emotional pain. So the centers in our brain that fire up when we're in physical pain are the very same centers that fire up when we're in emotional pain. So hurt is hurt and hurt hurts. So there's, and there's no way of getting around the fact that healing takes time. There's no magic wand you can wave, no switch you can flip to make a broken heart heal faster. You need some amount of time. But guess what is stronger than a broken heart? Possibility, potential, and your resilience. The thing you have to key into though is what's your process, what's your journey? Healing from a broken heart and being ready to step back into the dating world again is a very idiosyncratic process. What works for you may not work for somebody else and what works for somebody else may have no bearing on your life at all. So you need to really tune into yourself and figure out what your process is and how might you know when you're ready to put yourself out there again. Let's talk about four indicators that you are in fact ready to start dating again. Indicator number one, you are on your own team. What do I mean by this? Think about a spectrum that goes from self-critical to self-compassionate. Where do you fall on that spectrum? You're talking to yourself all day long about what you're doing and who you are. All of us do that all day long. It's called self-narrating. We self-narrate all day long. So it's really helpful for you to key into what's the quality of the conversation you're having with yourself. Do you fall all the way over on that self-critical end of the spectrum? Or are you all the way on the other side and you're able to be self-compassionate with yourself, giving yourself a break, letting yourself know that you're enough, seeing the beauty and possibility within you. If you are hanging out most of the time towards that more self-compassionate end of the spectrum, it's a great indicator that you are able to turn your attention to the world of, of dating and possibility and, and step into it with a sense of feeling good about yourself and what you have to bring to the table. Indicator number two is that you are committed to living well. We know that the happiest and healthiest romantic relationships are those that are built on two people who know how to take care of themselves and how to live their lives with passion, with curiosity, with interest, and with joy. So check in with yourself about the degree to which you are sourcing your life, fueling your life from that place of interest, curiosity, and possibility. How well are you taking care of yourself? How much are you pursuing things that you're interested in and passionate about? If you feel like you are sourcing your life from a place of interest and curiosity, and you've got connections and hobbies that light you up from the inside, it's a pretty good indicator that you are gonna be able to open yourself up and meet somebody where they are and create something wonderful. The third indicator is that you are open to the possibilities of love. So think again about a spectrum. This time the spectrum goes from pessimism to optimism. Where might you fall on that spectrum around your belief in the possibilities of love? Now I totally get that it's a lot to ask for somebody who has gone through a breakup, who may be in a place of um, brokenheartedness to even consider the possibility of optimism. But I want you to pay attention to it as an indicator because 
entering the world of dating when you feel really, really pessimistic isn't going to serve you very well. So track your progress, take active participation in your healing and notice what you can do from day to day to move yourself from that spectrum away from pessimism, more towards optimism. A few things that you might find helpful. One is a gratitude journal. Gratitude journals are good for all of us, no matter where we are relationally. And a gratitude journal means nothing more than having a notebook beside your bed or an app on your phone or a note in your phone where every day you're consciously writing down one to three things that you feel grateful for. It just is a way of putting on a pair of glasses, shifting your lens towards noticing what's beautiful, possible, and joyful in the world around you. That's one tool that you can use that may help you slowly over time move that needle from pessimism to optimism. Another one is just staying open to little micro moments of connection in the world around you. So catching the eye of the barista as they hand you your coffee in the morning, holding the door open for somebody, noticing um, people having a laugh at the diner as you walk by and noticing those just as a way of, again, inviting your brain to code that there's possibility in the world, there's connection in the world, and you're just doing things to kind of bring that sense more fully into your life. The fourth indicator is that you're able to meet people where they are. The person sitting across from you on a date is not your ex. And sometimes when we're in a place of brokenheartedness, we are really, really vigilant, looking for any cue or any sign that this person is at all like the last person that hurt us. The problem is that 180 degrees is not possible and it's really the answer. So you know that you're ready to start dating again when you can entertain the possibility of who this person is versus scanning them for evidence or clues or signs that they're at all like the last person. This fourth indicator is a tough one. And if you're finding yourself really struggling with this one, it's a great place to bring in the assistance of a therapist or a group in your community. There you have it, brave love warrior. I celebrate you and your resilience and the courage that it takes to put yourself out there to love and be loved. I believe in my core and the power of love. And I believe that doing what it takes to create a happy and healthy relationship is some of the greatest work we can undertake. For more on navigating the complex world of romantic relationships, watch the next video.